ttn minus 1 this is another formula for calculating marginal product so i have told you the how to calculate total product there are two methods for calculating total product then how to calculate average product then uh, how to calculate marginal product so these are the uh, two formulas for calculating marginal product now i come to the relationship of this uh, apmp and total product this total product and marginal product this i will explain you with the help of this given diagram this i have drawn for your convenience children have asked me ma'am how to draw this diagram it is a little complicated so children it is very simple you need to take some precautions you need to take some notes in your mind so you will be able to draw this easily first i will let you know how to draw this and then i will explain you the relationship so children let's start from uh, this y axis on y axis i have taken tp in upper panel and uh, here no in lower panel i am taking average product and marginal product and uh, on x axis i am taking number of laborers right units of workers so this way this you can divide in two panels uh, in upper panel i have shown total product and in lower panel i have shown average product and marginal product now how to draw this diagram see start from zero till here this tp increases at increasing rate and from where it start increases at decreasing rate from there you draw a dotted line and start making mp from zero and at this point make it this will be maximum of mp and from the this point it will go down like this this is your mp right this is your mp and ap will be below this right ap will be below this and uh, it will be maximum here so this mp is becomes maximum here and then it goes down and ap is below this and it becomes maximum here and then it also goes down and where tp is maximum from there you draw a line like this at this point your mp will be zero remember this where tp is maximum at this point this mp will be zero and after that this will become negative and ap will also become uh, yeah, uh, uh, ap will decline but it never becomes negative and see, tp is also declining so if you will draw this diagram in this way then it will be convenient now i come to uh, the relationship between ap and mp children this is mp once again i am uh, repeating and this is ap so you can see when mp is rising or when when mp is mp is greater than ap ap is rising right when mp is greater than ap uh, ap is rising second thing uh, when mp uh, when mp is uh, falling ap is constant or when mp is equal to ap ap is constant at this point mp and ap are equal and ap is constant then third important thing is when mp is less than ap then ap is falling but it remains positive right so when this are also right when 
MP is less than AP. This MP is uh, when MP is less than AP, AP is falling but remains positive. So these three statements you need to remember. When AP is greater than uh, when MP is greater than AP, AP is rising. When MP is equal to AP, AP is constant. And when MP is less than AP, then AP is falling. Right? So this is the relationship between MP and AP. Now, second relationship I will explain you between TP and MP. Children, uh, when TP is increasing at increasing rate, MP is also increasing and reaches to maximum. This is first point. Second point, when TP increases at decreasing rate, this MP starts falling but remains positive. This is second point. Now third point, when TP is maximum, MP is zero. This is third point. TP is maximum here and MP is zero. And fourth point, when TP is falling, MP becomes negative. Right? So this is the relationship between TP and MP. I hope it is clear to you. For your convenience, I have drawn this table also. Uh, how to calculate uh, these TP, AP, MP. Here I have taken uh, units of workers. This is variable factor. Constant factor is machine. That five units of machines uh, I have taken. And uh, on that, when you increase, and that those five machines are constant, fixed. And when you increase this variable factor, number of labors one by one, so how total production will change, how average product will change, and how marginal product will change. This I have explained you uh, with the help of this diagram. If you try to recall this, uh, how to calculate TP as I told you, AP you multiply by number of workers, you will get TP. Right? This AP 110 multiplied by 2, that is number of workers, you will get TP. And if you have to calculate AP, this TP should be divided by number of labors. 100 divided by 100. Then 220 divided by 2, 110, 360 divided by 3, so you will get 120 and so on. And for calculating this marginal product, 220 minus 100, that will be 120, 360, uh, this two, uh, three, uh, 220 minus, uh, sorry, 360 minus 220 will give you uh, 140, 520 minus 360 will give you 160 uh, uh, and so on. So this way you can calculate marginal product also. Now I will come to uh, law of uh, variable uh, proportion. Uh, children, the statement that uh, is given in your book says that the law of variable proportion states that as more and more unit of a variable factors are applied to a given factor, uh, given the fixed factor, total product may increase at increasing rate initially, but eventually it increases at diminishing rate. So this is the statement of the law, and th this law comes uh, under some assumptions or it will operate under a uh, few assumptions that I will discuss one by one. The first assumption is the state of technology is given and remains unchanged. The state of technology is given and it remains constant throughout. And second uh, assumption that few factors 
are kept uh, fixed by uh, other are the valid or variable then uh, techno technology is such that it is possible to change factor proportion and uh, the last assumption is that uh, uh, the units of the variable factors are homogeneous and equally efficient uh, these are homogeneous in the sense of efficiency so they are equally efficient so on the basis of these four assumptions i try to uh, explain this law with the help of this given diagram that i have drawn here i will take help of this diagram for explaining uh, this law as i told you that uh, in the upper panel total product is shown as we go on increasing number of variable factor uh, with the given fixed factor those fixed factor five machines so tp increases at increasing rate up to point m and after that it increases at decreasing rate uh, and then it reaches to maximum and then it starts falling so this uh, take shape like this and uh, here you can draw one tangent also and one very important thing point, uh, point children i um, uh, will tell you that uh, at this point that is denoted by m from where this tp start increasing at decreasing rate this is known as point of inflection point of inflection right this is known as point of inflection from where this tp starts increasing at decreasing rate so this is uh, the case of tp now i will come to uh, mp mp increases uh, till the point uh, this till this point m from where this uh, till this point where this uh, tp is increasing at increasing rate from there i have drawn a line here and uh, till this point only mp is maximum after this it starts uh, falling and uh, another uh, thing that is uh, uh, about ap that ap is also increasing and it reaches to maximum very important thing the point where ap reaches to uh, its maximum that is the end of the first stage of production this first stage of production that is stage of increasing returns so this is the end of the first stage where this ap is maximum after this second stage of production starts this is second stage of production where tp is increasing at decreasing rate and reaches to maximum and this mp becomes uh, zero so where tp is maximum and mp is zero this is the end of second stage of production and then comes third stage where tp is falling ap is falling and mp becomes negative this is the third stage of production so this first stage of production is stage of increasing returns the second stage of production is stage of decreasing returns and this third stage of production is called stage of uh, negative returns and a rational producer would like to produce only in the second stage first stage and third stage will be eliminated uh, how i mean he will ignore first stage and third stage because if he uh, stops here in the, uh, at the end of first stage then he will be losing this much possibility of production so a rational producer would not like to stop here then in the third stage since mp is negative and ap is falling tp is falling so producer would not like to operate even in this stage also 
he would like to operate only and only in second stage where this uh, uh, TP is increasing though it is at decreasing rate but it is increasing this AP is falling but it is positive NP is also falling but it is positive end of this stage of course it becomes zero so a rational producer uh, would like to produce only in uh, the second stage so children when you explain in which stage a producer would like to uh, produce so you have to uh, explain in the same way by eliminating first stage with reason then third stage with reason and why in second stage only this you need to explain right and children now there are reasons why this first stage operate why the second stage operate and why this third stage operate this the reason for this first stage is uh, better utilization of uh, resources uh, because as you go on increasing number of uh, variable factors with the fixed factor so production will increase there are only five machines earlier you employed only one labor four machines were unutilized then two then three when all the uh, resources will be utilized efficiently then production will increase at increasing rate right so this better utilization of resources then division of labor is also possible specialization is also possible so these are the reasons for uh, increase in returns then comes negative returns in uh, this stage uh, children uh, due to uh, overcrowding uh, or uh, i may uh, i should say uh, not overcrowding sorry uh, disturbing of optimum proportion this fixed factor and variable factor work in a certain combination that is called optimum uh, proportion that is uh, called optimum pr uh, proportion and that gives you maximum production once this optimum proportion gets disturbed uh, that is very natural if uh, number of the machines are limited fixed five and you employ 10 laborers so what will happen you go on increasing 10 11 12 so uh, maybe there will be laborers who won't be getting machine to work right so this optimum proportion uh, will get disturbed and uh, negative returns will start and third stage as i told you it can be due to managerial problem, it can be due to overcrowding of variable factors, confusion, uh, commotion, this uh, negative return uh, starts. So these are the various reasons of uh, why this increasing return occurs, uh, why uh, negative, uh, sorry, decreasing returns and why they are negative returns. Then uh, children, I have told you about return to the scale where all the factors of proportion whether variable or fixed both are changed so when both the factors are changed the scale of production also changes right and that is only possible in long run returns to scale and returns to scale as i told you earlier is not in your uh, syllabus also but since it is part of this topic so you must know at least uh, how uh, it is different from returns to a factor and returns to a factor i'll repeat again only one uh, uh, factor is variable while other factors are kept constant and it returns to scale we change all the factors of production and therefore the scale of production changes i hope this chapter is now clear to you and uh, further if any queries any confusion any doubts you call me i like to uh, i'll try to clear your doubts okay so have a good time stay home stay safe